In today's video, I'm giving you one solo queue strat for every single map in Rainbow Six Siege. The first map is going to be Oregon. Now, as you can see, I brought you to top floor as Maestro. Now, typically, your teammates will make the reinforcement on the left and head hills on the right. That's pretty default, and you as Maestro can abuse this. What you'll do is you'll put a Maestro camera on this little metal grating here, and this Maestro camera will allow you to see through the head hills into Trophy and zap pretty much anybody inside either of the rooms, while also allowing you to shoot any drones that come through the head holes. Speaking of denying drones, you're also going to put an observation blocker in front of these head holes right here. This will make it to where the drones don't know that your maestro camera is here in the first place, so if they come and try to drone it out, you can easily shoot their drone and make sure they have no information for attic. Now the next maestro camera might seem a bit weird, but you're literally going to put it on the wall right here. I'll explain why you do this later. Now typically also you will have feet holes along the right side of the bunks wall inside of kids right here. With a maestro camera somewhere in kids, like let's say about right here, you can actually shoot the feet of people who hop in the window with your maestro camera just like this. Now typically you'd use your gun to do this, but if they're trying to plant right here, you can deny that. Now the only issue is if you try to deny a plant and they go behind the bunk, you can't really do it. Which is why we put down that second maestro camera, because the second maestro camera can deny that plant. So no matter where they hop into bunks, you can deny it. The second maestro camera also can see anybody inside of trophy as well as deny people who are trying to plant behind the couch or just running in through the wall in general. The cool thing about this third evil eye right here as well is if you turn it to the left, you can also see through the attic rotate and shoot the feet of anybody who hops down in attic. So it's a multi-purpose strat and as long as you find a safe place to hide and get on your maestro cameras, this works really, really well. In terms of your other observation blocker placements, I definitely recommend one in front of this white shelf right here. This will make it to where if they're droning through trophy, they won't be able to drone anybody that's sitting inside of the bunks right there. And then the final observation blocker can go on the door into kids to make sure that if they drone up white, they also can't drone into kids either. It's pretty useful. But not as useful as the solo queue strat for my next map, which is going to be Clubhouse. For the strat, you're going to come into the basement and play a Rooney. Now typically your teammates will reinforce this hatch, but also that hatch gets opened a lot, so what you can do is put an Aruni gate on top of it. Whatever side of the hatch you're standing on is where the actual Aruni gate module will land, so that's where you're going to shoot it, so I like to put it as close to where I will be sitting as possible, so right there is where I usually put it. And as Aruni, you have a metal fist that can punch into soft walls, so go ahead and make the feet holes for your team, as well as any head holes for your team, and any rotates for your team. Now in terms of where her next Aruni gates will go, you definitely want one on the double door for main stairs right here. This is because typically people will send a lot of utility here, whether it be smokes for the doorways here, flashes for the doorway here, or ace charges or habana pellets for the wall over there. Either way, having an Aruni gate here will waste some utility, which is why you play Aruni in the first place. The only issue with this Aruni gate is it doesn't actually give you information on when they're there, because as you can see as an attacker, I can easily see people who are in the site before this Aruni gate gives me any audio cue, which is why you're also going to put barbed wire on bottom main stairs just to give you a warning. Now for your last Aruni gate, you have three options. The first option is you can put it on the dirt door, but personally I like to barricade this if no one's playing inside of it instead, so I don't recommend doing that. Optionally as well, you can put it on the blue door right here, but that also makes a sound cue and a visual cue whenever you as a defender pass through it to rotate, so I don't like doing that either. Personally, what I'll do instead is I'll put it on the moto door, because the amount of times that you'll be rotating through this door to get flanks isn't that often, and it really helps in the later stages of the round whenever they make this late push into church from this door, especially if they don't have any utility. Now in terms of where your barbed wire goes, I definitely recommend barbed wire at the bottom of the blue stairs, or somewhere on the oil hallway staircase. Now the strat is pretty much set up for you, but one final little secret tip is if you break these two chairs right here and you get on top of the table, typically with a reinforcement on this wall you can shoot to the left of it right above your rotate, which gives you an angle onto secret stairs that can get you a lot of kills. Something else that can get you a lot of free kills though is this next solo queue strat for Chalet. Now this is a strat for top floor with Azami. As Azami, you're going to be primarily holding the library side of the top floor. Quick little side note before we get into the strat, you definitely want to be shooting any of these pots that you see anywhere around the map because I personally love hiding drones in here and I know other people do. So if you're going to roam library, I definitely recommend you do that first. But if you're playing inside of library, you need to know what to reinforce. 
Firstly and obviously, you want the left side library wall reinforced right here. This will allow you to sit on the mezzanine without having to worry about getting shot from this window because a reinforcement is protecting you. But if you want to still contest that window, you can put a small head hole next to the reinforcement that gives you a pixel peek onto anybody on the window. It's pretty useful. The other window you have to worry about is that window on library. And if you want to rotate to contest it and you don't have to worry about being shot from that window, you should reinforce this library wall here. This will allow you to safely play behind the door and contest people and also rotate out without getting shot from the window. But there's also this window you have to worry about. So if you want to play inside the box, the next wall and the last wall you have to reinforce is this wall here. Not only does this wall protect you from the double window like I just said, but this wall also makes sure that they can't get an angle through this wall onto the double door or the head holes as an attacker. So it's really useful to reinforce this wall. And if you even put head holes on this wall as well, it will pressure people on this window from getting the wall open. Now, in terms of actual Azami placements, the first one that you're going to want to do is on this display case inside of library. This will make it to where if they want to ace or Habana this wall open, they first need to worry about this Azami barricade, which will waste a lot of time and utility, which is the entire purpose of you playing in this room in the first place. Second of all, it also protects your doorway, so if you want to rotate inside of library to contest the window from a much more forgiving angle, you can use this Azami to play off of it and get that forgiving angle that I just mentioned. The second Azami barricade that you want to put down is on the wooden rail right here on the top of mezzanine. This will make it to where if you want to actually move to mezzanine, you don't have to worry about the window, but it still leaves a little bit of wiggle room so you can peek the window if you want to. If you don't want to risk that though, then you can always just put the Azami barricade a little bit more to the left and you don't have to worry about the window at all. One of the many purposes of this strat as well is if they try to ace open this wall here, you can easily sit behind this cover and shoot it. But before you worry about doing the library strat, the first thing that you should do in the prep phase when you spawn in is put a zombie barricades in sight, because that's going to be closest to where you spawn and you're not going to be playing there anyways, so it just makes sense to give these to your team before you leave. The first of which being in a zombie barricade somewhere on the piano. Listen, this one is super important. You get to play the piano, and also, they can't shoot through the piano to be able to kill you. Which, yes, by the way, this is not bulletproof. You can shoot through the piano, so I find this to be super useful. If you're not a fan of that one, though, then you can easily put in a zombie barricade right here to cover the doorway and give you something to peek off of as well. Optionally, you can save these two barricades and put two on this doorway to close the doorway so that nobody can get on this window and shoot anybody rotating from bathroom or into piano. Now, as good as this strat is, we've been talking about nothing but defender strats. To show you one, our next map is going to be Cafe Dostoevsky. For this strat, you're going to be playing Buck, and you're going to be attacking the bottom floor from Vert. What you'll do first is you'll spawn Riverdock so that you don't get spawn peaked. Then rappel up to this ledge right here and open up the Red Stairs hatch. Once you open up the Red Stairs hatch, you can send a drone onto the top of Red Stairs. Now, your prep phase drone should have been at the bottom of Red Stairs to save time, while as your next drone is going to drone out all of Cigar, all of Bar, Cigar Shop, Piano, Pixel, Bathroom, Whitehall, Cocktail, Bar again, and then into Freezer. Once you're sure that all of third floor has been droned out and you still have one flank camp for red stairs and one flank camp for white stairs, you can begin to drop the hatch and start your strat. The strat being that you're going to play multi-level vert from this floor here by bucking open the floor once like that and then bucking it open a second time like that, which will allow you to get vert into kitchen from two floors away. Now, you actually are really hard to shoot because not only are there two metal crossbeams going vertically, but there's also two metal crossbeams going horizontally, which makes you way harder to shoot and you're super far away, so you're just at a super good advantage here. You can get multi-level vert from places like this, or maybe even simple places like this into kitchen. You can even come all the way over here and get vert into prep. If it'll let me, hello? There we go. You get the idea though, you just want to start making multi-level vert because it's super hard to shoot you. But you shouldn't really waste more than a minute and a half being up here. So what you're going to do, check your flank cams, make sure no one's on the staircase, pop this hatch open, and start playing vert normally. First, I'd come over here and make a bunch of vert this way. Then I do the same thing across this wall and this wall. But wait, once you're here, there's a super cool angle I want to show you. If you get on this vert for mining, you can shoot a hole into this wall for kitchen, and now you have a huge long angle into the back site of the other bomb site, which typically can't get vert on it. So this is super powerful for you. 
But once you've done that, you've put a bunch of pressure on here. Hopefully you don't have the diffuser like I do right here. And you can begin to do the late round part of the strat. If you brought hard breaching charges, you can open up the reinforced hatch here if it's not electrified. Once this is open right here, you can easily drop and start to make a bunch of noise and hopefully apply a bunch of pressure so that your teammates can get the bomb down in either one of the sites. But that's about it for the strat. The only hard part about this strat is you have to be very good at managing your time, which is not at all like this next strat for attacking on border. For this strat, you're going to be playing ram and attacking the bathroom teller's bomb site. What you'll do first is spawn on the east side spawn, then you're going to repel up to the building just like this. Once you're here, you can repel in, hide behind this staircase here, and make sure that you drone out all of archives. Once you're sure that archives, armory, the armory office, fountain, and office are all clear, you can begin to hatch your plan. The first step of which is you're going to throw a ram device directly through this window and immediately activate it, just like this. This ram gadget, as you can see, will slightly create some vert on this floor, while also giving you a rotate between both of these rooms, and also creating the most amount of vert for bathroom you can possibly get out of one ram device. Not to mention, with her shotgun, you can easily open up the hatch if it's not reinforced, so with one simple drone, you are easily able to create a lot of pressure. Not to mention, ram also has two more drones, the second of which you're going to put on this floor here, and send it forward. Not only does it create more vert for bathroom, but like I said with the other one, it also creates a rotate which is pretty useful for you and as a cool second gesture it also creates all of the vert for this hallway as well this is a lot of super useful vert for just two drones for the final drone what you're going to do is put it in archives and you're going to send it diagonally so that it paths into this door just like this this will create the remaining amount of vert that you need for workshop while also getting a lot of the backside of workshop and server area so that you don't miss a spot if there's any roamers trying to contest your hatch drop if you have teammates that are able to get this hatch open, you as Ram can smoke off the rotate and smoke off your left as well, allowing you to get a pretty easy plant down behind this wall. Or you can smoke off the door and plant here, doesn't really matter, you can just use smokes for a plant. If you thought this plant strat was good though, this next plant strat for Skyscraper is even better. For the strat, you're going to be playing Gridlock and attacking the top floor. What you'll do first is you'll spawn helipad, shoot out the default camera, and make your way over to the west garden wall and repel up. Once you've repelled up and you've ensured that no one's going to run out on your window or on your door, you can repel onto the black balcony. Once you're here, open up this barricade right here. The hardest part of the strat is now, which is making sure that nobody is on the hard right here or on these stairs. Once you've ensured that nobody is in these areas, you can throw a track stinger onto black stairs to make sure that you don't get flanked. And if it helps you, gridlock tracks have the same exact travel physics as drones. So if you know how to throw drones, you probably know how to throw gridlock tracks. Your next biggest challenge is if you want to go in through the rotate that is typically right here, then you need to cross this hallway, which has an angle here, maybe head holes here, an angle here, maybe head holes here, an angle here, maybe head holes here, an angle here, the rotate here, an angle here. There's a lot of angles. So what you want to do is you want to just literally throw a smoke grenade right next to you. I brought frag grenades, but you get the idea. Once you've smoked off this entire part and you have tracks to your right, what? happened here hello can we throw there we go i don't know what happened then you can easily cross and go through the rotate now your biggest problem would be this door or the angle through the bomb chassis here which you can easily smoke off or better yet gridlock tracks off to then be able to take karaoke and get the plant down right here or right here doesn't really matter as long as you use smokes and gridlock tracks inside of karaoke to get the bomb down you should be set up for success it's honestly pretty easy to do if you know how to use basic smoke grenades. An even easier strat is this theme park strat though. This strat is for defending initiation and vault, where you're going to be playing Valkyrie. As Valkyrie, shoot out these little wooden pegs right here, and then you're going to throw your Valkyrie camera on top of this wooden chase, just like this. Now when you get on this Valkyrie camera, you can clearly see all of Waiting Room, even into Vault, but more importantly, you can see all of Dragon, whether it be Top Dragon or Bottom Dragon, and even the cache door right over there. So you get a lot of information just out of this one camera, and it's pretty hard to see if you're attacking from Dragon's side. The only place that camera doesn't cover is Control Room. For this Valkyrie camera spot, you can throw it right above this case, just like this. 
This Valkyrie camera will give you an audio cue if anyone drops the hatch, while also allowing you to see if anyone's on the window, if anyone's coming in through the door, or just if anyone's in control room in general. The best part about this is when they look for a Valkyrie camera, if they drop the hatch, they can't even see it. But because you have an audio cue, you'll know that they're there. Now, the only place we don't have information on is the yellow hallway that leads into waiting room. For this, you'll want to aim your Valkyrie camera inside of the yellow oil canister and inside of the orange scaffolding, just like this. Now, because there's so many construction things here, this kind of just blends in with all of the construction items. But if you get on the camera, as you can see, I can see any players that are inside of the yellow corridor, as well as anybody on yellow stairs. So this is a great camera. Now, if you feel like having some fun, you can put a nitro cell right about here. This will make it to where if they drop the hatch and they get off of the metal box, they will actually get nitroed from below. As you can see, that's the hatch drop, and if they walk forward a bit, you can easily kill them for absolutely free. Speaking of playing below, though, let's go on to Coastline where you'll be playing Solus specifically with a shotgun for the top floor of Hookah and Billiards. The reason that you want a shotgun is because you're going to be playing below, and there's so many places that you can play below with a shotgun to deny a plant. First of all, you have the default plant spot right about here inside of Hookah behind the couches, or if they decide to go behind the actual couch next to Cool Vibes Rotate, you can easily play from below here as well. Next, if they try to plant on the aqua side, you can easily shotgun from below here as well to deny them from walking in the aqua door or from planting behind the bomb chassis right here. You can also use the shotgun to make yourself a rotate so that you can easily go from one plant spot to the other if they try to do so. And then also, if you're scanning and you notice they're on their drones or anything, you can shotgun beneath them beneath the rotate. You can shotgun beneath the window to contest people on the window. It's just nice having the shotgun because there's so many angles you can get, whereas using your impacts only allows you to get two of those angles. Also, with the newly added shotgun buff, this shotgun in specific is actually one of the best in the game. Pair that up with the SMG-11 even after the slight recoil nerf, and you can still have a great loadout that's easily able to kill people. Overall, if you like playing a bit more passively on the roam, this strat is for you. If you want to roam way more aggressively though, let's move on to my next map, Villa. For the strat, you'll be running Alibi for the sites of Aviator and Games, specifically as you can see in the bottom right, bringing Observation Blockers yet again. The reason for that I'll be getting into later, but for now just know as Alibi you're actually going to be roaming in Trophy and Statue for the backside push. Now in terms of where you'll put her clones, the first clone is going to go on the right side archway for Trophy, just about right here. Now the reason I put it a little farther back is because you'll actually put an Observation Blocker in front of it. Now, as you can see, this observation blocker will make it to where drones can't drone out this alibi clone, which will make it to where if they peek this doorway, which they commonly do, they will more than likely shoot this alibi clone because they couldn't drone it out before, which is why you as alibi will be sitting right here. As soon as they shoot the alibi clone, they get pinged, you see their ping, and you shoot them. It's very, very easy to do. Now, what if they try to actually push from the bathroom door and aviator instead? Well, as a warning, you can put an alibi clone behind the desk in astronomy just like this. Pair this up with an observation blocker behind the blue weapons case in astronomy, just like this. And now, as you can see, the leg of the observation blocker covers the alibi clone so they can't drone it out from the bathroom door, which will in turn get you information if they're trying to flank you. If you want to be able to capitalize off of this information, you can use a makeshift rotate with your bailiff here, or you can swing this doorway here as well. The only other place you really have to worry about is the wolf window, or the boar window, whatever you call it, and the top of red stairs. But if you put an alibi clone at the top of red stairs just like this, with feet holes along this wall so the people on the window see the alibi clone, and an observation blocker in front of those feet holes, then the people on red stairs will shoot the alibi clone, which will alert you, and the people on the window will shoot the alibi clone because they can't drone it out, which will also alert you. You can also put a head hole right here to make it a bit more believable. The only issue there is it gives an angle into 90. And now you pretty much have all of your bases covered. This observation blocker also serves a double purpose because if they try to drone in from statue and get a long angle into 90 through your feet holes, now they can't unless they go through landing here, which will probably end up being shot by either you or a teammate on the skull door. So as long as you're playing passive and only getting aggressive whenever you get pings from your alibi clones, you should be getting a lot of free kills on the roam. Now, roaming on Villa is great, but a map that's even better suited to roaming would be Bank. 
But roaming won't be the point of this strat, because as Goyo, you're going to be actually anchoring in the basement side. For this strat, you're actually going to run the TCSG, which I know is a bit controversial because Goyo has the vector with a 1.5, but hear me out. Once you've made both of the rotates for sight, you're then going to put head holes next to this rotate, as well as head holes on the far wall right here. With these head holes paired up, you can sit on the right side of the bomb chassis and get a long angle into the sight, onto the door, and through the head holes onto the CC rack as well, which can get you a lot of free kills. If that's not a long enough angle for you, you can also put head holes all along this wall as well, with an optional rotate on the left side so you don't get shot from CC, and now you have an even longer angle into CC that they never would normally expect. Now in terms of head holes, the last ones that you're going to put are on this wall, so that you can watch your marble stairs because you need to do that if you're going to be playing inside of the B site. But that's enough about head holes, where do you actually put Goyo's canisters? Well one canister is going to go on this wall here. This will ensure that if they're trying to get the bomb down when you pop this canister, the Goyo fire will actually fall onto where they're planting, and it'll last 20 seconds so that wastes a lot of time. Optionally as well, you can put a second one below it in case you burn the first one too early, or if they destroy the first one as well, so it's pretty easy to do. Your third Goyo canister can go right on this wall here. This also produces fire on the exact same spot, allowing them to not be able to plant, and as you can see also they can't hop on the desk. But that one in specific on that wall, you as the Goyo player can easily shoot, whereas the other ones are a bit harder for you to shoot, but it's something that you can still get done. And finally, what I recommend doing is, if you're not playing in Garage, you can barricade this door and put a Goyo on that, or a better option is putting a Goyo canister actually on this door here, that way you can shoot it if they're really pushing you backside and you need your attention to be focused elsewhere. It's pretty good as long as you know how to space out your utility. Speaking of spacing out utility, let's move on to my next map, Canal, where you'll be spacing out zero cameras to attack the top and even the bottom floor. What you'll do is you'll spawn on floating docks, and then you'll move all the way up to the side of the building here and shoot your camera on the front of the light just like this. This camera here, when you get on it, can see through the windows and get a long angle onto anybody on the top floor, so it's pretty useful. And if this window is open, which you can easily shoot open, then you can see through there onto the sky bridge as well. Speaking of opening windows, you can also open up this window. The reason you do this is because you can come all the way onto the roof and shoot a zero camera onto this wall just like this. This zero camera can see in through the window into sight, and if you even put it a little bit more to the left, it can also see into the other sight through the doorway on the left as well. If this window is open, you also have another camera that can see into Skybridge. If you're pushing top floor to take the basement, however, what you can do is throw a zero camera onto this wall just like that. This zero camera can watch the white hallway for any flanks, as well as the white stairs, so there's really no flanks that can happen, except for anybody trying to flank your yellow stairs or your printer stairs. This can easily be negated, though, if you throw a camera right here. This zero camera can watch the yellow stairs, and it can watch the printer stairs, so now you have nowhere you can possibly get flanked if you're pushing the bottom floor. You also have hard breaching charges if you want to get the hatches open, so there's that too. Speaking of playing above, let's move to Emerald Plains, where you'll be playing Castle on the top floor above Dining and Kitchen. As Castle, your primary objective is to hold Vault Control, so that you can open up Vert just like this, so that you can see anybody on the wall and shoot them when they come into Freezer. To do this safely, however, you want to make sure that you have these two walls reinforced. And you also want this door right here, castled. You also want the door into meeting castled as well. Now, I wouldn't necessarily castle the CEO office door, although it might be useful to you, because your roamers need somewhere to go, so instead, I'd put a proximity alarm on this little yellow door here, that way if they hop in the window or if they come in your hallway, you'll know about it. What I would do, however, is castle off this orange window. This will make it to where they can't repel on this window and shoot you if you're trying to rotate down orange stairs. But you won't need to do that if you open this hatch and rotate down the hatch instead. Now this might seem like a Hail Mary play, but it's pretty useful, because if they don't get control of the hatch, you now have angles above the reinforcements that can watch all of this hallway right here, which is pretty powerful for you. Now in terms of where your last castle goes, you have multiple options. You can castle off this door, which I see a lot of people doing, or you can castle off this memorial window, which is actually my personal favorite. This allows you to play inside of Memorial and rotate down the orange stairs, but why would you want this? You want this because you can open up a portion of this wall and sit on orange stairs to get a long angle onto anybody on the freezer wall here. 
which works nicely because typically in solo queue, your teammates have the brain to make a rotate on the right side of this wall here, so it works out for you. I like this strat a lot because you kind of rely on your teammates to do what they do normally, which is setting up the site in the correct way. A strat that you don't need your teammates for is this strat for Outback, where you'll be playing Cade for party and office. Now as Cade, make sure that the electrical closet walls are reinforced, because this is where both of your Cade claws are going to go. Your first Cade claw is going to go actually inside of this little pocket in the electrical generator. This will ensure that because it's above metal, it actually can't get shot from below if they have an IQ. Another Cade Claw that is completely immune to IQ is the Cade Claw in this shelf just like this, because she can't shoot through multiple layers of wood and a TV and a shelf without at least a few bullets, and if she's doing that, that'll give you a warning because it takes a while, so you can easily take the Cade Claw off and trick the wall if need be, or maybe shoot her back, doesn't really matter, but you'll get a warning that you can easily use. Because both of these Cade Claws are so accessible, as you can see, I can easily pick one up and put it back down, you can easily Cade trick this wall if need be, so using Cade to trick this wall on Outback is a great strat. Speaking of walls, let's go over this next strat for Nighthaven Labs, where you'll be playing Osa to help your ace get this wall open for top floor. Now as you can see in the bottom right as Osa, make sure that you bring EMP grenades. Because as Osa, what you'll do first is you'll make sure after not getting spawn peek from any of these windows that you put a deployable shield on the staircase just like this. This specific angle will make sure that these boxes cover you from this window while also not being exposed from this window while also not being exposed from a runout where you can easily throw EMP grenades onto the wall just like this and get the wall open with your ace. Once the wall is open, you can easily get angles onto rafters and anybody inside of the IT wall and room so you can get some free kills. What I'd do then is I'd let your ace play behind this OSHA shield, and then get your next OSHA shield out and go to the hallway that leads into rafters. Once you're here, use the OSHA shield to break the barricade, and then you can aim more towards the left and right to further contest the player that is on rafters. Now that you have an ace pressuring the kid on rafters, and you're pressuring the kid on rafters, it's a 2v1, which should be an easy gunfight if you know how to coordinate gunfights. Once you've done that and you've shot this default camera here, you can then put your OSHA shield down right about here and shoot anybody through the head holes here, or maybe even the rotate here if they have it. This is where some actual reliable intuition comes into play. You're going to pick up your shield. Now as OSHA, if they have a rotate here, you'll go through the rotate. If they don't, you'll have your OSHA shield out and you'll put it right about here to contest people on the doorway. If you take the first route, your ace can come into IT and help you get a plant down in here. If you choose to take the second route, which is honestly more comfortable for solo queue, then your ace can go into the closet here, and you can go on the doorway here to pressure anybody outside of pillar. He can even go on that wall too, which is even better. Once that's finished, you can pick up your shield, push to the left, maybe even put your shield down and go for a plant about here, or maybe even behind pillar if ace has the bomb. But either way, using Osa to really help out your typical ace player that usually spawns over here is a great idea, considering the fact that everyone runs ace for this site. Speaking of ace, let's move to Nighthaven Labs, where you'll be playing ace to attack the top floor of Nighthaven Labs. What you'll do is you'll vault over this wall here and make sure that no one's on these windows to contest you. Then you'll throw an ace charge on the left side, but be quick to shoot out the second segment that drops down here because this is just for head holes. You want this for head holes typically because they'll have a reinforcement here and head holes here that you can easily contest to get kills. You can even put it a little bit higher so that you can crouch behind the wall and they can't shoot you back, which is great for specifically contesting a mirror that might also be here. Then what you'll do is you'll throw an ace charge to the right, and then you'll throw your last ace charge below that. That way you can make a thermite size breach with ace without having to vault or crouch through it. Now that this breach is made, the hardest part is here, which is taking the gunfights on the head holes, on the door, and on the optional rotate here, as well as anybody on this door and behind the desk, because your next job is going to be quickly sprinting to this corner. <laughs> Once you sprinted to this corner, and your teammates have tried to at least take this room and the hallway that leads into it, you can get the plant down in this corner and have them cover you from these head holes and from this door. Once you've planted the bomb here, it should be a free round win as you can stay in this corner and take gunfights or leave and play the breach. And deny anybody trying to plant with your teammates also on the head holes in the door to make sure they really cannot defuse the bomb. Another map that's super plant friendly is Consulate, where you'll be playing Fenrir for top floor. As Fenrir, your first mine is actually going to go inside of this cardboard box here. Your next mine will go inside of the broken vase just like this. 
Your third mind is going to go on Visa stairs. Pair this up with some barbed wire so they can't run away, and you can easily swing them from the top of Visa stairs. Your next Fenrir mine is going to go inside of meeting room right here. The reason you to put it on the door is because they can easily run away, but if they have to peek all the way out here to hit the Fenrir mine, you can be on the heddles and punish them for being up so far. If you pair this up with barbed wire on the left, then you know where they're pushing from if they push the left or right side. And because nobody really pushes from this wall, your final Fenrir mine is going to go on the top of the spiral double door, or optionally, you can put it below the window on top of the staircase here as well. But that's about it. Depending on what side they go, you can activate mines accordingly. If they push west, you can activate these two mines. And if they push the northeast or admin sign, you can activate these three mines. Doesn't really matter either way, because Fenrir is super easy and arguably pretty overpowered. If you want to make the game easier on yourself though, check out this next video. My name's Alka, and I hope I'll see you there. Later.